you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's this, 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 this enough so you can know what's up in the hood. The father you couldn't stand. The father that proclaimed to be the man. Dark skin swole with big black hands. Striking my mother with the left hand. I couldn't understand. A negative man with negative plans. Now I'm getting involved with a negative dance. But now he gone with no remembrance from me. It hurts even when I think. Dead to the streets and dead to me. My father he proclaimed to be. He just missed 18 years, a great moment in my life. She missed out 16 years of my life. She was never there. She left me so lonely and abandoned. Because he wasn't there, he made me a stronger person. Without any struggles, there's no progress. It makes me stronger every day. It made me think about the past and my father. It feels weird because everybody's watching my life story. I don't know if I could put him in my life. I don't know, I'm 16 years old, and I blew out my candle lights, and made one wish 16 times. It was to have my mom back in my life for the first time ever. That lady that brought me upon this world abandoned me when I was two years old. Then, out of 17 years, you wasn't there. One to three birthdays or six to seven visits doesn't mean that you was there. In the next hour, minute, and seconds, I will be 18. Hi, my name is Lornell Reed. I'm 17 years old and I attend to ACT Charter School. My name is Angela Rivera. Uh, I'm 18 years old. I go to Roberto Clemente High School and I'm a senior. For a long time, I had a grudge against my father. It's like he was just my enemy, and I didn't want to accept him who he was. My father, I just didn't want to accept him. But as I got older and as time went past, I just didn't think about it no more. He had it rough because his father wasn't, you know, there. Okay, one time it was uh, for Lionel's graduation, his eighth grade graduation to be specific. And it wasn't the best. Well, it was the best. It was like a very important moment for him. But... It was like everyone else was there, and his mother was there, and his father wasn't there, and it was like he kind of felt, you know, not all the way supported because it's like in order for you to be supported by your family, you need everyone there. You just don't need your mother there, so it's like, yeah. I did not have a role model because my only role model was myself. It was just to be positive, become successful the best way you can be. So. I just say I'm a better person without a father. That's like an encouragement because there was no male role model in my life. Honestly, the memories that I could ever remember of my mom is just like her being high and telling me that she loves me. Um, other than that, I have no other memory of her. How did she yeah, get? what kind of high she gets? Yeah. She'd be on her. She'd be on another world. You know how some people, they act crazy? You want me to act like her, too? Oh, uh, if you could. No, I don't think so. Oh. She just get high, and she just, she won't be here. She'll be somewhere else. The only thing I always see her was smoking and then getting high. That's all? She didn't do coke That's or all. heroin? That's all. Oh, yeah. China, why? What's that? <laughs> we don't need to know. Heroin. Never mind. Um, it's heroin, okay. She wasn't clean, so she couldn't take care of me. Um, I just think like she had to do what she had to do. Drugs was just her priority. It's sad to say I can't say nothing about you that's good or bad or anything at all. I think every child needs that father companion, you know, that that one on one with the other parent. Mm -hmm. But me raising as a single parent, I think I did pretty good. To bring the my father situation up after a great amount of time, it just make you think. 
and it made me think because that was the one reason I don't want kids. In your life, he did you a favor. Think about it. All your most, all your brothers and sisters, they young, got children, or they got a record, or they out there doing so they ain't got no business doing. When they say your name, I can hold my head up high. Not give her blood up to drugs. I hope that when I turn 18, she appears in my life. But this birthday was the worst ever. Because as the numbers get closer to 18, it's not the same. I wrote that when I turned 16. Amable, cariñosa, tranquila, si no la molesta, ve. Y, como yo digo, siempre se pasa alegre. Me gusta hacer mi trabajo. Me gusta tra el trabajo de la escuela porque yo quiero que ella sea una, una persona en el mañana de un gran futuro. Like, why she did it. Like, I really want to know why she left me to drugs. You know? Like, I just, sometimes I can't even sleep at night, you know, just thinking about stuff like that. Like, I don't even know my brother. Right? And, like, my mom's side of family comes up to me, oh, girl, you remember this? How am I supposed to remember that? It's just like, like thinking of having a better life and having money and having a car and just, you know, being yourself. And that's what motivates me to have all those positive things. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Wow. Uh, in five years, I'll be 22. I, uh, man, I want to be done with my nursing career. I want to make sure I have my PT Cruiser. I want to, I want not so far much of an apartment, but, uh, yeah, in five years, I just, I want my uh, career goals kind of not too set, but set and just be myself. You had, you did not have nothing that a lot of other people had in their life. So that's just the only thing that could do is just make you stronger. Um, don't let that stop you from reaching your goal because just don't. You're just another person in your life. That's it. So just don't let that stop you from doing nothing. That's all I have to say. Today we will be talking about teen pregnancy. We have Kevin Smith talking about the hardships of being a teen father. We also have a few teen mothers with their own perspectives and beliefs on whether or not most stereotypes on teen fathers are true or false. How did you feel when you found out you were having a son? I was scared because I wasn't ready. So you're not scared no more? No. For fathers, as young fathers, there were varying degrees of involvement. I've certainly known some young men who did marvelous jobs. Uh, really tried to give everything they could of themselves. But of course, they're put in difficult positions as well. Teen unemployment as a whole is very high. I saw figures saying that 57% of teen fathers are not employed, which isn't shocking because many of them would be of high school age, and so you would hope that they would be in school. 
and then of course they would have limited opportunities to work. But of course that also means that their ability to lend economic support is very limited as well. And as I mentioned earlier, the fact that a young man may not have had the benefit of having a father in his own life puts him in a position where he's not quite sure what this role entails. What does it mean? And so I think in some very practical, concrete ways, a young man has to learn what is involved in being a father. What is my role in relation to my son, to my daughter? And to realize how important that role is because there's so much learning that happens in the first year of life. How did um, both of you react? How did you react? Um, when I found out, I was shocked. I mean, like, I guess it's like intuition I knew, but I wasn't sure. So when I went to the doctor, like, I was really shocked. How long did it take for you to, you know, for your, to tell your parents? Like, uh... My mom, she asked me, like, during the pregnancy, but I didn't tell her until I was six months. How about your father? Um, my dad didn't find out until the baby was born. Wow. Why'd you wait so long? Um, my dad, we don't really talk that much. And like I thought it would be awkward to just call him out the blue and say, pregnant dad. So you guys talk now. How old for your mom? My mom? Yeah. Um, I was just scared of how she was gonna react. Like I didn't know what was her reaction, so like I was scared, so I just didn't tell her. What was the stress most stressful part about being pregnant, would you say? Like, um, school. School? Balancing um, it all. Yeah, no, just kind of like I didn't want anyone in school to know. So just like hiding the pregnancy at school and not really talking about it. If you can go back on anything, would you change anything that happened? No. No, why not? Because my child is in my custody. We are happy. There's no problems. So you're a full custody father? Yes. How does it work? It works. I go through the court to get custody of my child. I got custody of my child. His mother has been successful. I'm going to beat So was the uh, father supportive? Of yeah. Was very surprising. What was his reaction when he found out you were pregnant? Um, he was shocked. Like it was his first baby too. So we were just all um, kind of shocked about it. How do you manage school and baby? It's hard, like. When you have your life. <laughs> yeah, so, like, during the day, my grandma, and, like, after school, like, when I come home, I tend to just, you know, tire him out so that after I could do my homework and get ready for school and stuff. And then, there's no really me time. No really me time. You have to fit that in somewhere. So. Did you lose any friends in the process of getting pregnant, or, like, family members, or anyone just, like, no, all my friends and family were really supportive of me. Oh, that's awesome. It's not that's what great. they wanted, you know, it wasn't what they expected from me, but they were really supportive. What's your plans after you graduate? I'm going to Alcorn State University in Mississippi. Is he coming with you? Yes. What is your son's name? Khalil Devon Smith. Khalil Devon Smith. He comes to see the baby, he spends time with the baby, but like financially he doesn't really do anything. Financially, my mom and my sister. What stereotypes do you right, have you heard of fathers? Do you think those are fair assessments of them? The well, I, I think stereotypes uh, are seldom useful. Uh, more often than not, they're the result of lazy thinking. It spares us the hard work of careful examination. So I wouldn't attach too much importance to stereotypes. On the other hand, when we see evidence of something on a wide scale, we know that it's not just a personal problem, but rather it's a social and psychological and political issue. It's a much broader scale. So I think it's, it's not a stereotype uh, to say that a teen father uh, is probably struggling to finish school. Um, and that's an important issue. Uh, the teen father is uh, probably struggling to find work just by virtue of the fact that he's 17 or 18 or 19 years old and has not reached a point in his life where he's acquired the skills that might uh, open the door to more gainful employment. 
so I think those kinds of things are kind of broad based descriptions and we always have to keep in mind that they're dealing with a particular set of pressures too and I think it's it, it's important to keep that in mind otherwise we can kind of degenerate into finger pointing and name calling and uh, things that are, are not uh, particularly productive but in each case you know I think the pressures and responsibilities that weigh on the young parent are extraordinary. Are you happy to be a father? Yes. Why? Because that's my soul. That's your soul? What would you do for him? Everything. Everything. Only 38% of teen mothers who have a child before the age of 18 graduate from high school. Compared to the other 75% of women who lay childbearing until 20 or 21. 38% of teen mothers who have a child before the age of 18 graduate from high school. Compared to the other 75% of women who delay childbearing until 20 or 21. Parenthood is the leading cause of dropping out of school. Only 30% of teen girls cited pregnancy or parenthood as a reason for dropping out of high school. My name is Kimberly Horton. I'm 17 years old and expecting a girl March 20th. I think the baby is going to change my life in a good way because my life wasn't going too good at first. I my brother passed away and I was like letting go in school and really not caring about anything. But I think that my baby is going to make a big difference because now I care about somebody. I really believe that this this is something that's going to give her more direction. My family reacted very, very bad, but after a while, they face the facts, and now everybody's here for me. <laughs> we wish you Americans. Yes, yeah. we wish. I know that my daughter didn't uh, intentionally get pregnant. I know that um, she has a very good head on her shoulders. So I, I don't believe that this is going to be something that's going to set her back. It's hard already because I have to wake up early in the morning, go to school. Um, come to work in the afternoons, do my homework when I get home, and it's just a lot of things to do in one day. Too many things to do in one day, not enough time. When you're pregnant, it's like carrying two bodies, so you're tired all the time and exhausted, and it's really hard. It's a struggle for both of us right now because we are a single parent family. With the father being absent in the home, it doubles and sometimes triples the work because being a mother in itself is a full-time job. But when the mother has to work in order to support her children, it takes her away from the home for many hours during the day. Don't get pregnant. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to say don't get pregnant because it's not easy and I see a lot of young girls saying they want to have babies and they want to do this and they want to do that but it's not easy as you think it is and when it happens to you you're going to be really scared and you're going to have to take on a lot of responsibilities and drop all your fun for a baby so just live your life while you got a chance to. My advice to young mothers is to spend as much time teaching and bonding okay. with your children. Okay, thanks mom. I love you. Mm, I love you too. <laughs>
Lakeview Academy is a school that was started because a bunch of young people begged the members of this church to start a school for them 36 years ago. And so we're a school, a high school, for kids who've gone to other high schools and who know that they did not like those experiences and they want something different and they do not want to go back to a school like that. My name is Freddie Maldonado. I go to Lakeview Academy and I'm my age is 20 years old. My name is Bianca Gomez. I'm 18 years old and I go to school at Lakeview Academy and I received news that I'm three months pregnant. <laughs> I knew that Bianca and Freddie had been together for a couple of years, and I knew that they had not gotten pregnant, and um, I guess I was hoping that they were not going to do that until after they both graduated from high school. When he came in February, he needed six and a half credits, so by the end of this year, he'll probably only need uh, five or four and three quarters, so he should be able to graduate next year, even if he misses a little time for the baby. And then Bianca needed nine when she came, so she'll probably need, oh, seven, seven and a quarter. That's a lot to earn in one year, even if you don't have a baby. So she's probably looking at a bit more than a year now. But still, he's in really good shape, and he is older than she is, so she has to spend a little more time. You know, let's hope she does it. I really didn't have a childhood because I have so many brothers and sisters, it was kind of rough. Um, the man my mom chose to be with was kind of a bad example for us, from abuse to homeless to taking care of kids. So I didn't really have a child. I really didn't have my dad at the side. It was mainly my mom, but that's the way I grew up, so. My childhood, very, the press, I mean, it still holds. I mean, it affects me now that I'm older and I still think about it. And I wish things could have been different because I would have been different. So it's made a big, you know, change in my life. But I guess that made me who I am today, a stronger person that I am today. That's why I didn't finish school because in order for me to get stuff, I gotta work. That's the way I was brought up. Oh, they're ready, all right. They're going to be parents. You get pregnant, you're ready. I'm pretty responsible from my, how my childhood was, and I've seen my mom, how she's independent with seven kids, and, and being 18 and having a boyfriend that I have, I mean, I, pretty, I think I'm at a good age to have a baby. I kind of believe it. It was after two years being together, it's like, wow. It was like a surprise, a big surprise. Why was it a surprise? We were being careful, Addie, real careful. But it's just like all of a sudden it happened, and she wanted, she always wanted a kid. Me and Freddie seen that we had a pretty good relationship, and I've always wanted a baby. He's always wanted a baby. So I think we, we thought we were ready, but I want, I really wanted a baby. We're here to hear our baby's heartbeat, a regular checkup, and we're walking in to see my doctor right now. <laughs> yeah. Like a regular day, guys. <laughs> You got a responsibility you got to take care of. And it's not, it's not that you got to think about yourself now. It's about the little kid. And you can't think like we want everything. We can't get everything we want no more. It's like now we got to think before we get anything. And it, it's, it's really a little bit stressful. It's stressful for her too, for the emotions she's going through. Well, we just got out of our doctor's appointment, unfortunately. We didn't hear the baby's heartbeat. We heard a little bit of it, but it wasn't that much. Um, she really couldn't get exactly where the spot was, and I guess the baby's still too small to exactly know, like, hear the heartbeat. But it was a little exciting to hear that little bit, but hopefully next time. No, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good. 
but hopefully next time we get to here, our next appointment is May 23rd, and she said everything else was good. I was doing good, and the baby was good. She came upon last week, last month, now she lost a pound this yep. month. <laughs> it's there, she's not gaining weight. Everything is good so far. The future, to work on maintaining and, and nurturing a good relationship between each other. So that if they do that, I think they might stay together. They need to get married and they need to make a commitment to each other and then stick to it so that they can have a good life with each other and be good parents. I think that's the most important thing. Just, I hope this pregnancy goes good and my baby comes out healthy. If, if I had a little girl and later in life she gets pregnant, wow, I, I really, I don't know, I'll come down to it, I'll break it down, break it down to her. But I, I wouldn't, I'll try to avoid that. I'll, pro, I'll talk to him about sex. And one thing, that's why my parents never talked to me, like sat down really, but they, they told me like, they don't wanna see me. And I always took it like a joke and look what happened. And it's, it's really, you really gotta sit down with your child and, and really talk to them. Let them know what's out there. It's not a game. Life's not a game. It's really something you gotta precious. Thank you.